Finally, this happened. After eight years of research, development, and countless delays, Blue Origin has officially brought the new Glenn rocket to the testing stage, gearing up for a launch no earlier than Jan 6th. Clearly, this is a declaration of competition against SpaceX in the new year, a year that promises to be the most intense rivalry yet. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss any of our episodes. Our next goal is 150,000 subscribers. Of course, we'll strive to improve in every aspect, but we still very much need your support. Thank you so much. What awaits the incredible feat SpaceX's Starship is set to achieve in January, space enthusiasts like us will first witness the debut of a new rocket, Blue Origin's New Glenn, the sworn rival of SpaceX. Well, this new development is pretty exciting. Just when all of us space enthusiasts had nearly written off BEO's chance of launching New Glenn anytime soon, the company surprised us December 27th by igniting New Glenn in what we commonly call a static fire test. The 7BE4 is in the first stage of New Glenn ignited shortly before 8 p.m. Eastern at the Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral in Florida. The engines fired for 24 seconds, Blue Origin said in a statement, including 13 seconds at 100% thrust. The static fire test was the culmination of a test campaign that involved loading propellants into both stages of the launch vehicle and going through practice countdowns. The company appeared to outside observers to be preparing to ignite the engine several times earlier in the day, but didn't do so. The company didn't give details about the test while in progress during the day or during similar tests on December 21st, which also did not culminate in a static fire. The company said the test campaign demo day of launch ops of the rocket and validated vehicle and ground systems before an actual launch attempt. The campaign met all objectives and marked the final major test prior to launch, the company stated. The test came hours after the FAA granted a launch license to Blue Origin for New Glenn. The license authorizes the company to carry out New Glenn launches from Cape Canaveral, although with few details about specific trajectories or other conditions for such launches. By working closely with Blue Origin, the FAA issued this new launch license well in advance of the deadline of this historic maiden flight of New Glenn, Calvin Coleman, Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation at the FAA, said in a December 27th statement. With the license in hand and the static fire test complete, Blue Origin appears ready to proceed with the inaugural launch of New Glenn as early as January. Well, all we have left to do is mate our encapsulated payload and then launch, stated Dave Limp, chief executive of Blue Origin in a social media post. Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin's founder, was more succinct. Next stop, launch. For the static fire test, Blue Origin said it used manufacturing test demonstrator fairings in a payload mass simulator. Those will be replaced with flight hardware versions of the payload fairings in a small payload, the Blue Ring Pathfinder technology demonstrator for the company's Blue Ring orbital transfer vehicle. That payload will remain attached to the upper stage of the mission. The company has not disclosed a launch date for the first flight, called NG-1. However, there is one airspace advisory for a new Glenn launch on January 6th between 1 a.m. and 4.45 a.m. Eastern, with a backup opportunity at the same time the following day. However, even without a launch, a static fire test marks a significant step forward for Blue Origin's notoriously slow-moving new Glenn. After years of waiting, Blue Origin's long-awaited mission has finally become a reality. The fiery test, conducted just two days after the Christmas holiday, reflects the urgency Bezos has instilled in his rocket company over the last year and a half. In fall of 2023, Bezos removed Bob Smith from the CEO spot at Blue Origin and appointed longtime Amazon exec Dave Limp to lead the company. During an interview at the time, Bezos acknowledged Blue Origin was moving slower than he hoped. Blue Origin needs to be much faster, and it's one of the reasons I left my role at CEO of Amazon a couple years ago, he said. I want to come in and Blue Origin needs me right now, adding some energy, some sense of urgency. We need to move much faster and we're going to. Over the past year, the company has shown greater agility in its race to the launch pad, completing work on ground infrastructure, assembling the rocket, and preparing a fleet of ships that Blue Origin plans to use for recovering the first stage of New Glenn for reuse. So, after all, can Blue Origin catch up with SpaceX? While each step by Blue Origin is commendable, catching up with SpaceX is a long journey, especially if they continue to adhere to their inherently outdated working style. Blue Origin's got a rich man mentality, driving it in the form of Jeff Bezos, who tends to take a conservative approach, keep failures and development hassles under his hat, and focuses on politics and partnerships over hardware. SpaceX is almost the polar opposite in philosophy, which is the driving personality of Elon, the poorer man's approach, where everything's done as quickly and cheaply as possible to minimize development times. 
development hiccups are celebrated as a way to stimulate public interest and hardware partnerships aren't actively pursued since Elon has found that vertical integration of his essential components frees SpaceX up from the whims and reliability or lack thereof of outside suppliers. If you look at the results that these two opposite approaches have achieved, it doesn't take a genius to see which one's more effective. After 21 years of work, Blue Origin only has one functioning system which can't even get to orbit. SpaceX, in under two years, has two different orbital launch systems, as well as the only functional way for a U.S. crew to get to space. Although a launch schedule for New Glenn has been announced, in reality, we can't be too certain about the timeline, especially for a company known for delays like Blue Origin. Furthermore, the manufacturing methods combined with internal management practices are factors that could extend their launch schedule, as has happened before with the production of New Glenn. To understand this better, let's compare the development process of New Glenn with Blue Origin's perennial rival SpaceX in developing the Starship. Much like SpaceX's next-gen Starship rocket, Blue Origin started work on its semi-reusable New Glenn in the early 2010s. Bezos publicly revealed New Glenn just a few weeks before CEO Elon's long-planned September 2016 reveal of SpaceX's next rocket, then known as the Interplanetary Transport System, ITS. Both were massive, meant to be powered by a huge new methane-oxygen-fueled engine and designed from the ground up with some degree of reusability in mind. But with fairly different designs and wildly different development philosophies, the paths of Blue Origin and SpaceX have only gone further apart in the last few years. SpaceX thoroughly redesigned its next-gen rocket multiple times before throwing out a large portion of that prior work and settling on an unexpected stainless steel variant that CEO Elon Kirsten's Starship in late 2018. Further differentiating the company, SpaceX began work on steel prototypes almost immediately and successfully built and flew a scrappy Pathfinder, powered by an early version of the same Raptor meant for Starship less than a year later. SpaceX then improvised a factory out of a series of tents and began churning out and testing dozens more refined prototypes, seven of which would go on to do flight tests between 2020 and 2021. SpaceX's last test flight ended with a full-size steel Starship prototype successfully landing after launching to an altitude of 10 kilometers. Testing slowed considerably after that success, but SpaceX appears to have begun ramping it up again as it starts testing S24 and Super Heavy Booster Prototype B7 that have a shot at supporting the rocket's first orbital launch attempt. That orbital launch debut has been more or less continuously delayed for years and is about 20 months behind a tentative schedule Elon first sketched out, albeit for a drastically different rocket design back in 2016. Technically, the same is true for Blue Origin, which also said it intended to debut New Glenn as early as 2020. However, while SpaceX can point to the instability of Starship's design before 2019 as a fairly reasonable excuse for delays, the general characteristics of New Glenn's design appear to be virtually unchanged despite their many delays. The smaller rockets, 7 meters wide and 98 meters tall to Starship's 9 meter width and 121 meter height, will still use traditional aluminum alloy for most of its structures will be powered by seven BE-4s, will land on several deployable legs, and will have an expendable upper stage powered by two BE-3U engines, and will be topped with a large composite payload fairing. Blue Origin canceled plans for a small interim fairing, abandoned plans to land the booster on a moving ship, and tweaked the booster's landing legs and a few other attributes, but New Glenn is otherwise visibly unchanged from its 2016 reveal. Ultimately, that makes it even stranger that Blue Origin's done practically zero integrated testing of any major New Glenn components. Only in 2022 did the company finally complete and test a New Glenn payload fairing. Blue may have also built and tested a partial booster inner stage, which the New Glenn upper stage will attach and deploy from. Fortunately, Blue Origin has finally conducted a full-scale test of their New Glenn rocket. However, who would have thought that New Glenn had to sit on the launch pad for two months just to undergo such a brief test? Honestly, many aspects of New Glenn's development program are unclear. For instance, it's not evident why the company's taken so long to complete the rocket components, nor why it required two months just to carry out the test. On paper, New Glenn looks like a very potent threat to Falcon Heavy, with capabilities that in some cases exceed what at present is the world's most powerful rocket in service. Payload mass is less, but payload volume much higher due to the larger core size. Being a threat to Falcon Heavy is not good enough, though, since SpaceX isn't sitting on its hands in developing the groundbreaking Starship system. SpaceX is not content to merely recover the biggest and most expensive part of the launcher. 
The booster, as is in the case of Falcon Heavy and New Glenn, SpaceX is aiming at the holy grail of rocketry and recovering every part of the vehicle in a system that is rapidly and thus cheaply capable of being reflown. Combine this with the ability to refuel in low Earth orbit and there's nothing that the yet-to-be-flown New Glenn can answer with. At the time Blue Origin launches a New Glenn scheduled for 2025, SpaceX will be putting Starship into orbit and the game will come to an end. 100 tons to orbit for just $2 million. Adding to that is the capability of SpaceX's system to refuel in orbit, allowing this high payload capacity to go anywhere in the solar system, making it challenging to consider what could top that. While difficult, the methods of Blue Origin is using to build New Glenn's primary structure are about as standard as they get for modern rockets. Blue Origin itself even uses the same tech to build its smaller New Shepard rockets. So does SpaceX, ULA, Boeing, Ariane Space, and virtually every other manufacturer of rockets, including NASA's SLS core stage, that's wider than New Glenn. The results of these challenges, whether managerial, technical, or other issues, are clear. Blue Origin still has a lot of work to do before it can reliably launch its next-generation rocket. Meanwhile, SpaceX has launched two fully-stacked Starship flights in 2023 and completed four flights in 2024 alongside dozens of Starship hardware components prepared and ready to achieve 25 launches in 2025. However, the long-anticipated beginning of New Glenn's hardware-intensive development process has finally arrived, and it appears that Blue Origin's first orbital rocket may finally be accelerating its preparations for its inaugural launch. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.